What's going on, YouTube? JT Userborn here. Welcome to the third episode of the Rambo Rewatch. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Rambo 3. That's right, the third film in the Rambo franchise. The first one's First Blood. The second one is Rambo First Blood Part 2. Third one is Rambo 3. So the titles in this thing, none of them are very consistent with each other. So, uh, yeah, so Rambo 3. Overall impressions, I hadn't seen this one in a very, very long time. I watched two the other day. And I watched 3 and 4 back to back the next day. Uh, I do think 3 is better than 2. Um, the plot of this one this time is Rambo's kind of off doing his own thing. He's like making money off of fights, although he's giving it to a bunch of like monks and stuff. He's just kind of living more of a, I guess, a more peaceful life, just kind of running away from his own demons. Troutman comes to uh, basically ask him for uh, to go out with him on this mission to Afghanistan because you got the Russians and that, like, they're, they're caught in their own little Vietnam-type war, uh, Rambo declines, uh, Red Foreman comes in to the movie, you know, Red Foreman from that 70s show, um, Kurtwood Smith, he tells them, like, oh, Trotman's been kidnapped, uh, like, his colonel best buddy, and so Rambo decides to go into Afghanistan and get him back. That's the plot of it, the rest of it is, it, it's definitely paced a little better than the first movie, or than the second one, it's not nearly, it's not as good as the as First Blood, obviously, but this time around, we have Rambo going there after Trotman, Trotman actually does some stuff this time around, so just standing around giving speeches, um, he's actually in the action in the battlefield, Rambo goes out, does his thing, kicking ass, you know, like we expect Rambo to do, you know, I was reading up to, at the time of this movie's release, it was, like, the most expensive movie of all time, which is kind of crazy to think about, like, R-rated movies being the most expensive films ever made, especially considering the way budgets balloon out of hand in today's day and age. But, yeah, Rambo doing this thing, he gets Troutman's help, uh, they come across some over-the-top, like, Russian bad guys, because, you know, it was the 1980s, and Russia was, you know the villains in a couple of Stallone movies. He had this one, and then he had, obviously, Ivan Drago and Rocky IV. So Rambo does this thing. He's going out. He's helping some people. They go to toe-to-toe -to -toe the bad guys. It gets super over-the-top, like, stupid, like, towards the end of the movie, um, which is what I kind of hoped. Uh, but Rambo's just a badass. Like, there's one part where he gets stabbed right through the side, and he has to, like, cauterize the wound. It's like, ooh, man, that was cringy. That was bad. Ooh, so you just kind of clench up, like, ooh, that just looks, looked kind of rough. Um... I think my favorite part in the whole movie is where Troutman and Rambo are basically like have this entire army that they're going up against and Rambo just grabs his gun and he's like what are we going to do Johnny's like fuck him and then they start just firing and the, these bad guys cannot hit him like it's like their bullets are afraid to hit Rambo like come into contact with uh, Rambo it's kind of okay like how the okay come on give me a break like at, at least you know if he was, like, doing stuff in the sides, like, you know, stealth-wise, but, I'm like, they're literally going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an entire army face first, and, like, they have all their guns pointed at them, and they can't hit these two guys, and then, you obviously, you have, like, the rebels and that who come in to uh, help aid them towards the end of the film, and the way they take down, like, the big final bad, you know, the bad guy is okay in this time around, nothing truly memorable, the, the most memorable villains in that are in Rambo 4, I think, because, by God, we, we'll get to talking about them in a second, but, yeah, so, uh, the way he takes him down, it's, it's like he's in this tank, yet his tank, like, you know, when Stallone fires his missiles at tanks and that, like, the tanks are just, like, very combustible, when people fire stuff at his tank, it just never seems to do anything, but, yeah, he basically goes, like, the, the bad guys get, like, his helicopter rambles in his tank, and they basically just start playing, like, a game of chicken, and then they collide with one another, and, of course, Stallone's okay, because, you know, a tank's definitely got stronger armor than a helicopter, but it's just so freaking hokey, and then, like, Rambo firing, like, his explosive tipped arrows, and then just entire helicopters blow up, Rambo's doing his thing, manning these big guns, he, of course, ends up shirtless, just like in the last movie, because, I guess, you know, Stallone works out, he's got to show off his, you know, physique that, you know, he's put in the gym for, which, you know, I mean, he put in the work and effort, he looks like a total, like, badass right there, um, doing his thing, and he's just... There, there's some hokey shit in here. I just think it's a little better than uh, 2 was. Like, 2... I don't know. 2 just wasn't connecting with me as much. I think the villains are stronger this time around. I think the story is more interesting. Because it it's more personal. Because Rambo is going out there trying to get his friend back. Whereas in, like, uh, Rambo First Blood Part 2, it's just, like, him kind of, like, taking time off his prison sentence and doing some missions and stuff there. I mean, there's still a little bit of that personal connection in there, because obviously, you know, 
Rambo was in Vietnam and there's soldiers, there's POWs he wants to rescue and he's doing his thing and he's trying to like make up for uh, what happened in the first blood but uh, yeah overall consensus like even when the movie opens up like I was more entertained because it's just like Rambo's got there you see him like doing all these different fights I this is one that was heavily parodied in Hot Shots Part Dukes so I don't know if you guys have seen Hot Shots Part Dukes but that's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen uh, the opening scene of that just completely parodies uh, First Blood or uh, Rambo 3 and a lot of Rambo 2 but uh, I think it's entertaining as hell uh, at least that one but Rambo 3 not quite as uh, good as First Blood but it's definitely an improvement over Rambo First Blood Part 2 and I'm trying to think of other things to say about it like I don't think it's an amazing movie by any uh, means uh, like I said, like, it's, it doesn't have, like, the appeal of something like a Commando. I know I keep bringing up Commando a lot in these Rambo movies, reviews, but, uh, like, in terms of one-man army films, like, Commando is, like, the perfect one to do it because it's just so goddamn ridiculous. But it's so entertaining, like, the, the same way through. But, uh, Rambo 3 is, you know, it's, it's better than, it's better than 2. Uh, like I said, not as good as First Blood. I think First Blood's just the story and just... Uh, the emotions are a lot heavier in that film, but Rambo's still a badass, uh, I mean, I think after this, they had Rambo the series, the, the animated series, which is like, they're, they're taking an R-rated property and marketing towards kids, god, I love the 80s, uh, nowadays, you could, I guess I can't fly, it's weird, it's like, people have become more des desensitized to certain things, but, yet you can't market an R-rated thing to kids anymore, or whatever, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's a conversation for another day, and I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm getting really off track here. But, uh, yeah, so after this, uh, it'll be the last Rambo film for 20 years. This one obviously wasn't nearly as big a financial success as Rambo 2 was, which is kind of surprising because Rambo 2 made so much money. You'd think when they did Rambo 3, it would have been, like, a bigger hit. I think it's better than 2, but I guess at that point, people kind of started to just get a little bit tired of the, you know, 80s action movie stars, it was kind of towards the end of it, I think this one came out in 88, or 80, 85, or 88, but, uh, I think people were just getting kind of tired of it at that point, it's like, you know what, no, we've, we've kind of had enough of it, we're, uh, and hence why it was probably the last ramble for a long time, I mean, this was the most expensive movie ever made at the time of release, and it did, it still made its money back, it still made some money, but it just wasn't, didn't leave as big an impact as one or two did. And I think it's one of the lower grossing entries in the franchise. It's definitely, uh, I don't know if it made less than four did, but it just, it just didn't connect with, uh, I don't think it connected with people as much as two did, generally speaking, and even though I think it's a better movie. So uh, take it for what it's worth. I've been rambling on long enough. I really kind of just want to get to talking about Rambo 4, but uh, if you've seen Rambo 3, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comment section uh, down below. Uh, do you like this one more or less than one or two? Is this your favorite Rambo movie? Uh, we'll talk about it some more. I mean, I enjoyed it, like I said, more than two. Not nearly as much as one, though. But uh, when we get to the next movie, we'll definitely talk about something. Because the next movie, oh, Jesus, rewatching that, I forgot how messed up that one is. But anyways, uh, comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Uh, I'm going to upload for pretty much simultaneously with this video. And uh, then tomorrow we talk about Rambo Last Blood. So that should be uh, that should be fun. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you all next time. Peace out.